I'm only doing a quick test to make sure I don't have to ship this back for any reason. Temporarily hooking things up. Smaller wires will be for charging, bigger wire for the load. Throttle that I got has a different style plug. I'm going to just temporarily splice these together somehow. Black and red for power, and green for the signal on the controller, and white for the signal on the throttle. Got the battery positive and the battery negative stripped and pulled back just enough to get some alligator clips on there. Just to do a real quick test. Make sure uh, I might grab something to put in between. Just want to see it spin, make sure we're good. Yank these pins out of here, might be able just to slip those in there temporarily to test it. I don't have anything thin enough or long enough to go in there and detach these pins, so I'm just going to try and chop it up with these and uh, see if I can't get the pins out that way. these till the pins are not clipped in anymore. Okay, got him out. Just need to chop at that connector a little bit. Battery is showing 53 volts. Be a little spark. It's just uh, capacitors or whatnot. And while I got power supplied, I'm just going to check the positive and the negative on the throttle. Here. So 26 volts. back up. Probably shouldn't spark this time. So I charge the capacitors. Um, okay, let's just give it a slight twist. Let's see what happens. <sighs> Fingers crossed. I'm a little nervous. Disconnect, do some research, and see what's going on. There might be some, uh, looks like this one is labeled power, power lock. So there might be some kind of something I need to do here that I'm unaware of. Okay, it looks like the this power lock wire needs to be connected to positive or a key switch. That's cool. So that's like a lockout or something. All right, got another alligator clip on positive.
Oh. I scared the crap out of me. <laughs> this makes me so happy. Okay. I'm gonna disconnect. Okay, now what is this? It's a 750 watt DC brushless 48 volt e-bike motor. Pretty big, but I wanted a mid-drive. I didn't want to have to deal with a hub or finding one that's 18 inches and the rear. We, I just did not like the hub motor kits. They're all uh, pedal assist, or most of them are. And I just wanted something that I could twist the throttle and go. And that is definitely what this is looking like it's going to do. Pretty big. Uh, just barely fits in here. And I will give a better rundown of all the stuff I got in the final video when the bike is running. And you know, that looks pretty dang cool if you ask me. That's <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to start snapping chains. So it's going to be a little bit of a conversion thing going on here. We got a 420. ATV motorcycle chain and it's going to convert to a bicycle chain. So I got a lower bracket conversion kit for the BMX. Yeah. Somewhere in there, I, everything's kind of jumbled up. Anyway, I got some parts. We're going to cover this all better in the final video, like I said. Um, lower bracket, basically a bar, bearings, something I can attach some gears to. So I'm going to have a 420 gear here and a bicycle gear over here. We've got a few different sizes of bicycle gears, so if one's a little too uh, low in the ratio, I could switch it out, or vice versa if it's too high. Probably gonna put the battery on the back. It's a big old box. I didn't get one that was in one of those bullet shaped um, enclosures that probably would have looked really nice right there, but they cost a little more for something like that and the battery was half the size of something for nearly the same price. I forget what the prices are, but I figured but I figured if getting a big bulky battery would increase the capacity, that works for me. Then I can just find a place to put that, I think on the back, as a small rack. It's definitely not as big as the uh, deep cycle was, but there should be plenty of room to put that brick right about there. Uh, I'll have to figure out where the uh, speed controller is going. But uh, next step is just going to be cleaning it up, prepping it, getting it ready so I can mount a plate. This is uh, just the right size I need to come down here and mount on these mounting holes for the motor. Get that welded in and situated where the motor can slide back and forth. It's going to have to move to tighten and loosen the chain when I want to remove it. Or I can do that either um, with the idler pulley or a chain tensioner. I know they make them for the they make a little gear for the bike chain that would I could probably use on this side. So yes, big motor, little bike. It's a bit of an experiment. After going through, this is the second kit that I bought. The first one was packaged horribly, came busted, had a dent on one side, and the motor was completely seized. So um, after searching around, I just found one that was just looked like a good company. And they shipped it with lots of padding. I'll give you links in the final video when I'm all done with all this. And I've got a whole list of everything I've used. I'll give you the best rundown I can with my parts list. In the final video. So stay tuned for that. Definitely got a few steps to get through first. I would add a 420 sprocket on the back. And then just have one chain to deal with. A 420 chain going from the back. 420 sprocket up to the motor and just deal with two gears making it simple that way but there's not a clear path back to the rear sprocket the natural path of the bike chain goes straight to this hub so I think it will be easier just to put a couple sprockets on a lower bracket run the bike chain back because I know it's got plenty of room the bike chain is skinny the 420 chain is a little bit bigger and I'm just uncertain if that's going to fit going back there. So I'm going to just do this kind of weird setup where the big 420 chain comes down here to the spindle. I mean the lower bracket. And then on the other side there will be a bike chain.
sprocket that runs back. And this setup just paints a clearer picture in my head. I'm uncertain with a, trying to fit a 420 chain back there with the sprocket. The sprocket's also going to be thicker. Um, so that's why I'm doing it in this kind of weird way where it's just going to be two sets of chains. I like the idea of it just coming to here and then from here up to here. Two points to adjust. I can still slide the back tire to adjust and loosen the bike chain. And then the motor can slide to adjust the 420 chain. All right, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Lots coming up. Got some projects for the RV as well. Obviously, I need to fix out oil leak. Just trying to get the e-bike stuff out of the way since I finally have everything I need. So, yes, stay tuned. Lots coming up. Thanks for watching.